morning everybody this is Jean here from True Love Quotes for You um, today is our block party and we're working on block number seven seven weeks worth this is really you know flying along and I'm I'm enjoying it um, today's block is not necessarily hard but you will find as I found when I was um, um I find my blocks from different books and pattern books I have and magazines I have and I, I found when I was looking at this block which appealed to me um, when I actually read the instructions and the measurements it's not a hard block it's a precise block now a lot of people are like oh that seven eighths of an inch you know me I'm always like it's the the uh, the tiny line before you know the the, uh, the big number we're working with a measurement so incredibly precise and I it, it's called a it's called 11 sixteenths <laughs> anyway I go in depth to explain this measurement and I thought oh come on seriously I made the block in my experimental stage um, exactly and it turned out perfect it's made in, in a strip set way. As I was saying last week, it's not made in pieces how we normally do it. We cut it up into pieces. But I explain hopefully in depth with a, with a diagram of this measurement. And I, I think I've really done a good job um, trying to explain and how precise you're cutting. Very simple piecing but very precise cutting. And again, as I was saying in my tutorial quite a lot of quite a lot of uh, things you can wing in in quilting you can die hard quilters may say that's not true but I find it's true um, once you get comfortable there are certain shortcuts you can make and 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 uh, create your own way of doing things this block and it's not a bad thing to learn these precise measurements and to be comfortable. Not that we're going to be using them all the time. Okay, this is our block for block number seven. Hopefully you can see that. I used two fabrics. I actually didn't use a background fabric, although it may look it. Well, maybe not. I used um, two of my fat quarter fabrics. Um, this could by all means be your background fabric, your, your white or your neutral or whatever your background fabric is. I chose to use two different fabrics, but as you can see, high contrast. Very, very important that you have high contrast with this block. It's just two fabrics. It looks slightly complicated perhaps. Like how do I get those, those little, those lines in there and these triangles here and this funky measurement there it's all has to do again with this measuring what before we are actually um, putting the block together again this is constructed in a strip manner which I will in a few seconds you'll see how it's constructed so that is our block number seven and out of all my blocks that I've made so far this one has actually been, and can I say, perfect. It really is perfect. And as you know, I'm not, you know, if you're a, if you're a, a thread off, uh, but I was shocked. I was like, oh my word, this block is, is so, and there may be, no, not even, not even. It's like amazing, and this tiny, tiny, mini, minuscule measurement that you think, oh, come on, but it really, really makes a beautiful, beautiful, good-looking block. So that's our block number seven. But what I want to do right at this moment <clears throat> is I wanted to explain to you about block number eight. Now, I'm, this is a Sunday that you're going to be working for the next week on block number seven, but for block number eight... You're going to be needing a few bits. And what that is, is I'm going to be making an applique heart. And it's not just an applique heart. It's a patchwork heart applique on a background piece of fabric. So you, <laughs> the one thing you can be totally assured 
the way that we're cutting our background piece, because you're going to be needing a good size piece, bigger than 12 and a half inches, say, say 13 and a half inches. When we've appliqued hard on, then you can just cut your, your block down to 12 and a half inches precise. Um, but what we're going to be needing is a few things, because I'm, I'm going to be showing you my way of making an applique. And there's, there's, a, um, there's so many ways to make an applique. Uh, the traditional way is you make your, you would have made your heart a, a quarter inch larger and then turn it under. And then very carefully, it's called needle turn, which, which most, like so many um, professional or really, really good applique will do a, a hand stitched beautiful applique. An applique, if you don't know, is a piece of fabric adhered to another, sewn on to another piece of fabric. To, it's, not, it's not a pieced block what we're making. Um, I have it here, but I don't really want to show you. <laughs> maybe I will. This is, maybe I will give you a sneak peek. This is block number eight. Real quick. I'm going to put that over there. It's a patchwork heart. Now, you're going to, so many appliques need a pattern to follow your, to, to follow, to cut out. What I'm going to be showing you is, and your supplies that you're going to need, you're going to be needing paper. Your heart, just a piece of paper. I'm using copy paper. Now I'm using copy paper for a couple of things, so pay attention. You're just going to need a few pieces of copy paper. Um, a lot of, uh, what you're going to be doing is your heart is going to become your own. And I, I explained to you how you're going to do it. Um, you're going to fold your paper and you're going to cut out your heart. So your heart pattern within a certain size, which I will explain, is going to become your own pattern. Because I don't really know how to put stuff on, the, on my webpage to download and all of that. But you don't have to. For this simple, if you're the first time applicating beginner, this is you're going to be you're going to be thrilled because it's really going to become your own. So you're going to be needing for that. You're going to be needing your five, five pieces of fabric. You're going to be needing a large background piece, and then we're making a four patch patchwork, and then we're going to cut our heart out. But anyway, I'll show you how to do that. That's for week eight, but what you're also going to need is you're going to need paper. Now, my method is I got glue sticks, water-soluble children's glue stick, just a kitty glue stick. I use this Elmer's, Elmer's glue stick. That's what I use. I show you how I do my method. My method does not gum up your needles. I just put a tiny little bit on. It doesn't gum up your needles, and it washes right out. Now, by all means... If you want to go to your quilting store, your quilting supply, you can get quilter's glue in a tiny little bottle. It's really expensive. These are like pennies. But by all means, they have quilter's glue. So if you want to do that, by all means, I use a glue down method. There is also a method, which I'll show you how, not in depth, but it's called, this is called Pelon. We've used it before, um, or, or I've used it before in my, some of my appliques. It's called Pelon 805. It's wonder under interfacing. It's a fusible stabilizer. Now, with this product, you iron your fabric to your, your, this, this product here, and then you peel a paper away, and it becomes a two-way stickiness. Now, if you remember on one of my quilts, I used what's called, uh, from the Warm Company, steam -a -seam. And I use light steam -a seam too, which is, again, it's just another, another um, brand. But you can get this at any hobby store or your steam -a seam It's a, it's a fusible, sta uh, fusible interfacing um, stabilizer, fabric stabilizer. I don't use this on my applique because it tends, it can't, even the light stuff can tend to make your fabric a little bit, your applique a little bit stiff. So I like just fabric on fabric. And so that's why I, I use my glue method. But by all means, I show you how to do this, and then you eliminate the need for the glue. But also what you're going to be needing, again, to actually, if you're not using this, and you're doing my glue method, is a stabilizer on the back. So that can be anything, if you go to Joanne Fabrics or anywhere, you just ask, I don't have it here, I'm sorry, but you just ask for a lightweight stabilizer, not necessarily an iron-on, just a lightweight stabilizer. Again, I use a piece of paper. Now, again, 
my method of using a piece of paper on the back, you're stitching on the front, you're stitching your applique onto the front of your, your background fabric, but this goes on the back. Again, I don't find my needle dulls. Perhaps if you did 20 or 30 appliques, you might need a new needle at the end of it. But for one, for one application, for one block, my needle is absolutely fine because we're stitching through paper. The point is, and you're going, what? I don't understand. But we're stitching through paper to make the to make your stitches stay real nice, to stabilize your stitches instead of just. Um, you know, just keeping, uh, you know, an applique machine stitch can be quite intense. You have quite a lot of stitches in one small area. And so sometimes, as I was saying, your, your, your um, fabric has a tendency to pucker. And you want your stable, you want your fabric applique perfectly flat. And so you need a stabilizer. I use a piece of paper. So there you go. So for my method, you're going to be needing a glue stick. You're going to be needing several pieces of paper to cut out our pattern and for our stabilizer. Or if you want, you can adhere your state, your fabric, your um, applique on with your um, a, a, a fusible stable, a fusible interfacing, double-sided fusible interfacing. So that's for that's for week number eight, our applique. And also, you have to make sure that your um, your sewing machine has a nice blanket stitch. A blanket stitch is if it does if it's just a number on your machine. Um, let me just show you. Most of you probably know a blanket stitch looks like this. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is, uh, let me do it on this piece of paper. So here's our heart. Here's our heart. This is my background. This is my patchwork heart. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stitching this down with a stitch around the outside. And it's going to look like that all the way around. You're going to be doing a stitching around. It's going to go a, a, a straight stitch in, straight stitch in, straight stitch in, straight stitch in. And, and that's called a blanket stitch. And I think, I think if you look at, if you look at actually old um, quilts in a, in a more of like a folk art, maybe a primitive, a lot of, a lot of blanket stitches were done in black. And it makes a very folky, very, very um, homespun, very folk looking uh, block. Um, because it's an easy stitch to do by hand, actually. Um, and, and make it, make it a, a, a feature of your applique. So that's the stitch we're going to be doing. A blanket stitch, which you might want to look up on your machine. This is for next week. And maybe do a few practice. I, I tell you that. Practice, practice, practice your blanket stitch because when you come to stitch on your applique in whatever color that you want, I did mine in white, um, my four patch, I did mine in white, you want a nice, consistent blanket stitch. You don't want to experiment on your first project. So that's for next week. This is our block today. This is block number seven. Again, two high contrast just two pieces of fabric, but you want them high contrast. So block number seven, um, it's exciting. We're getting there. We're doing a little bit more, more, um, more like an advanced beginner. Some of our methods, this is measuring, but don't worry. I go in depth how you measure for this block. And it's very, very important. Don't think it is because your block's not going to, your block will turn out beautiful, but your there's so many places to match here. There's so many points. If you look on this, like you're thinking, oh, how am I going to get all of them to match? It's the measurement this week, not necessarily the, um, <clears throat> the um, construction, although obviously you have to construct it perfectly, but it's the measuring and you'll, you'll see my tutorial to follow. Anyway, that's that. That's block number seven. Look forward to next week's block number eight. We're doing applique. Um, and yeah, we're getting there. So I hope you enjoy making this. Again, send me your blocks. I have them up on my, my webpage. Beautiful, beautiful. Really, 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 really pleased. So um, I hope you enjoy it, folks. And thanks so much for following along with me. Okay, bye. 
So you will have seen our block. A um, bit different this week, um, but I wanted to show you, I wanted to um, explain something to you. It's just two fabrics, right? It's, and the fabrics I've chosen um, are these two fabrics. And again, um, this is my, I have no idea what this, this will look like. This is the, this is the beginning. Um, so so uh, when you see me at the very beginning, that's the very end of my, of my um, making the block. So I've chosen these blocks because they're high contrast and that's what you need in this block. You need a high contrast uh, block. But I have, um, I have instructions over here how to make this block. And it's very interesting. It calls for um, uh, uh, two strips from each fabric, two and eleven sixteenths of an inch. And I was looking at this block, and I'm thinking that's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. What the heck is an eleven eleven sixteenths? And I thought, well, no, let's do this. Let's do this together. I've never made something so so stinking precise. But I have to actually um, to tell you something. My son, uh, my son Maxwell, he was in a um, for, oh oh just a second there he is. Um, he was in a, a tech school and he was in a um, building occupations course, and um, they had to perfect their measurements. And his teacher kept saying, um, if you're a sixteenth of an inch off. Uh, in a in building at the end of the at the end of the wall, you could be two inches out, and I'm thinking a sixteenth of an inch. I didn't. I know a quarter of an inch, but a sixteenth of an inch. So this block calls for a two and eleven sixteenths, and I'm like, I have no idea where that is on a ruler. I've just gotten down to seven eighths, right? We do a lot of four and seven eighths. Inch. So what I did, I hope you guys appreciate this. <laughs> this is funny. I, this is one inch on a ruler. Uh, again, sorry folks, if you're working in meters and centimeters, I don't have a clue what that is. We're in America, this is one inch on a ruler. I've done this pretty much, um, uh, um, I, I looked it up. So what it is, here's, a, here's, here's one inch on your ruler. I'm going to take a shot of this so you can actually see. It. It, it may just be me, it may just be me. Maybe you guys know what it is. But here's your half inch line on your ruler. Here's your three quarter inch line. Now we've been working with that little line. Remember, I say the line before, the the the, the um you know the line before is your seven eighths of an inch. Now where's my little ruler? I'm using this Omni Grid ruler. Now I must say that it, it this ruler is a good ruler for quilting, but it actually it doesn't actually give sixteenth of an inch increments okay so I'm looking I'm having to we're having to find two and eleven sixteenths of an inch okay two and eleven sixteenths so okay I'm finding it's 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 a few lines past a half an inch so here's my what I'll be looking at we'll be looking at two and a half so there's my two and a half that's easy to find right there two and a half and then the next little line on my omnigrid ruler would be two and five eighths, right? So you get two and a half, two and five eighths. And the next line, the next line on my Omnigrid ruler would be two and three quarters. So we know what that is, right? And then the next big line, the next big line is three inches, okay? Well, here in between, and as I've done it, this is one sixteenth, three sixteenths, five sixteenths, seven sixteenths, nine sixteenths. There is the eleven sixteenth. But I'm seeing on my ruler that it doesn't show it. It only goes from, it goes from half inch to three quarter inch to one inch to, to the, the, there. So my, so I'm having to look, there's, there is a line that shows my two and five eighths. So a little space between Two and five eighths and two and three quarters is eleven sixteenths. There's no line here, but I know when I go to measure my fabric to to be so precise for this block, I'm going to be looking at two and eleven sixteenths, which is the right the, the right halfway between two and five eighths and two and three quarters. So <laughs> So I'm going to take a picture of this, and hopefully that will help you, as it, as it helped me because I'm like I don't know where to I don't know where eleven sixteenths are. Um, so I'm what I've done is I've squared this up. These two pieces we're going to be needing two 
we're going to be needing two, um, two, let me just get this, because I want it be, to be so precise, I'll just take this little sliver off. So now I'm going to be needing two and eleven sixteenths, and it's the between the it's between the five eighths inch line and the three quarter inch line, and it's right in between, now, all the way from there. I'm thinking, oh, really, seriously? But I'm going to do this exactly like the instructions. So I need, I need two of these that are 15 inches long. So for each one, We're, like I said last week, this is going to be a, a strip set making um, quilt. So there's my little line there, and there's my little line, my 11 sixteenths. Look at this, crazy, crazy. Hold on, two, I want to get this right, between that, 11 sixteenths, and down here, 20 quarter, 20, 11 sixteenths. So there's one, I mean, really, seriously, this is nuts. And then between that line and that line, right in between. And it's literally, what, a sixteenth of an inch off. But in, in, in building, my, my family are all in construction and um, building, and they, they, this is how they measure. They'll do like a 32nd of an inch. I'm like, what? But like, if you want things really fabulous, that's what you do. Ah. So there's two. Now what we're going to be doing is, this is, um, this is we're going to be needing um, 15 inches for these pieces here. We got two each. There's the bottom there. I'll just take this line. I'm going to be needing 15 inches. Is it nice and squared up? Yeah. So on this ruler here, this is nice squared up. I'm going to find my 15 inch line. That's easy. Let me see. Um, yeah, 15 inch. So I have 15 inches right there. Right there, no, don't let that shift. And then I'll just, I just, so I have my two and 11 eighths, uh, 11 sixteenths by 15 each piece. Oh my word, right? <laughs> now, what we're going to be needing is, I think this is a little bit easier. Yeah, we're gonna be needing one strip of each of these two and a half by 15. So I just tidy that up right there. And this is easy. And again, I will just, I'll just take this off so it's perfect. So we're going to be needing one each, two and a half by 15 inch strips. That's easy. Uh, there's two and a half. Do the exact same thing. Take this off here. Oops. And then measure my my fifteen inches. Um, there's my 15, and here's my two and a half. So, this is what we're going to be needing for our, um, I think that's it, yes. So what we're going to do next is we're going to make two what are called strip sets. And with the two and a half inch piece in the middle, which we've only cut one, two. We're gonna make these strip sets. The light, the dark, and the light. The dark, the light, and the dark. So these are our two and eleven sixteenths, and this is our two and a half. Two and eleven sixteenths, two and a half. So you're going to end up with two strip sets that look like this. Now what we're gonna do is you're just literally there's not points, there's no matching. You're just going to be sewing 
this strip set, you're going to be sewing this seam to, to there, quarter inch, and this seam up to there, quarter inch, and doing the exact same thing. I'll just stitch them, I'll press them, and I'll be back. So I've sewn my strip sets together, um, and what I'm going to do, as I've shown you before a dozen times, we're going to set those seams, and it's interesting, the fabric, as I said, I've said before, you sort of let the fabric know where you, it's going. In this respect, it's going towards the dark side. So I'm going to just roll this over, as you've seen me do. I'm going to roll over this seam to the dark side, pressing it right to the dark side. Set that aside. I'm going to set the seams. Now I've never made this block, so <laughs> hopefully it'll turn out. So I'm going to press this now into there. It's going to roll up to the dark, to the dark side. So this is a different way to construct. Push up and roll up. And that way you get you press on the top and you get no you get no little nasty little tucks there. And since this this strip was sewn so precise, I'm like, oh better turn out. So there we go. We have our two strip sets sewn. Now take it back over to the cutting table and I'll show you how we cut it. So hopefully you can see this. Um, it's very important that you mark your strip sets. This strip set, which is band A, has the dark, light, dark. That's band number A. This strip set, which is the light, dark, light, is band B. So it's very important that you, you, you mark them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be, we're going to be cutting both band A and band B. Let me get my cutters here. Um, and we're going to be cutting two. We're going to be subcutting each thing. We're going to be cutting two. I'm just going to take this right up just a little tiny bit, just a sliver. We're going to be cutting two six and seven eighths inch pieces. Okay, two six and seven eighths inch pieces. So from band, from band, um, let me just see. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I was just looking. So six and seven eighths, that's an easy one. Remember, that's the line before the seven. So this is six and seven eighths. This matches six and seven eighths. And this is six and seven eighths. Oops, there goes my pattern. Let me just open this up. Where is it? There we go. So we're going to be cutting a six and seven eighths inch square from both pieces. That way. And that one. And because we've cut it so precisely at the 16th, look at that. It's like exactly six and seven eighths. So that's band B. And then we come, we're going to come to band A. We're going to just square this up. You have just slightly a little tiny bit left over. Make that nice and straight. Take off that little sliver. And then six and seven eighths which we've done, the little line before the seven. This is band A, don't get them mixed up. And band A. Oops, that's six, oh, I did, I, I did five and six, seven eighths. Six and seven eighths. Make sure you, what is it, measure twice and cut once. <laughs> so here's our bands. So now what we're going to do is with, with our band A, 
going this way, dark, light, dark, what we're going to do is we're going to cut these on the diagonal. You're going to be cutting two of these, but band A from diagonal point to diagonal point. Hopefully I'm in the, the uh, frame there. From diagonal to diagonal. There you go. And then band A, this one. And there you go. Now that's band A. Now, band B, what you're going to do is with this, with the vertically, not horizontally, you're not cutting this way, you're cutting this way, you're cutting up this way. So you're going to be putting the block in front of you like this, <clears throat> with it going up, and then turning it onto its diagonal, and then block B, band B, you're going to be cutting this way. So you're, it's right in front of you like this, and you switch it like that. And then you take your ruler from diagonal to diagonal, and you cut those, those bits. And that is band A, and this is band B. Now I'll come back and show you how we sew them together. So now we have our two piles of our band A and our band B. And actually what we can do is we can actually start putting the block together. Remember how I always do that? And then we can construct the units, but I like to, I like to uh, do this. So visually, um, I, I see what I'm doing. So with band A, what we're going to be doing is we're going to make be making four. This is a four patch, okay? This is a four patch block because there's many, there's three units, in, or there's six units in each piece, but it's a four patch block. So what we're going to do is they're exactly the same. They're constructed exactly the same. We're going to take our band A with the wide bit up at the top and our band B with the wide bit at the side. And look how they make up, match up. So now we're going to make up four of these. Wide bit at the top, wide bit at the side. We're going to make up four of these units. Wide bit at the top, wide bit at the side. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to sew together. It's almost basically a, a, a triangle, half square triangle. We've done this before, remember? But it has a few more bits. So what we're going to do is these seams will match up. These seams will match up. They will nest. You will pin them as we've done. You'll come along on these four units and you'll nest the way they've been stitched. They will nest together. And you'll, you're going to come along and you're going to stitch this unit, all of these units together the exact same way. There. I've made all four of my units and what I'm going to do, when you're sewing them, be very very careful because this is all in the bias edge. Remember how we talk about that? When you're making these basically a, a fancy half square triangle, you have to be very careful of this bias edge so you don't pull it because it stretches. That bit of fabric stretches. So set the seams very carefully and then what we do is I'm just going to press where it, as it goes up there because it's light dark light dark. So I'm going to, I'm just going to very gently, I'm just going to very gently roll that over to that side there. And I think, wow, the preciseness of, of the, of our stitching really, you know, really does help, you know, it really does um, make the block really nice. Make this really stand out, I should say, the contrast. At the these stripes. 
And if you've nested your seams, you're going to get a nice, crisp line. Nice, crisp line. And you might want to, I'm going to just give it a little spritz of, um, of, I have sizing there. Just make my block really crisp and nice. So I'm going to do all four of them. Actually, I'll go back and I'll, I'll spray these two also. Now, we have our four units sewn together. The larger sides on each side. So how we put this together is this one, the dark, goes at the top on this one here. And then we have the light. And then on this one, let me just get my bearings here. We have this block here with the dark on the side. Okay? So the darks at the, the wide darks at the top, the wide darks at the side. This one, the wide dark, is on this side. And then this one, the wide dark is on the bottom here. So do you have that? Hopefully I can let me just make it so it's right in front of you. See if it's in the frame. So this is the four patch that you're going to construct. You got that? All made out of a strip set. No little you know no little half square triangles or anything like that. Just out of a strip set. When you see a, a, a block that, that says strip set, this is what you do. You're just sewing strips together and then you're subcutting them. And then because of the contrast, it's a real nice contrasting block. So that is our block. Now what are we going to do? Just like we've done a million times before, you're going to construct two units. You're going to be constructing this one right to the left, doing a center seam, and this bottom one. This is called a four patch. Right over there, you're going to make your seam, a quarter inch seam, keeping the configuration, and then you're going to come back and you're going to sew this middle seam together. And as you can see, this, this block has made a, like a secondary, there's all sorts of things you're looking at. You see the square? You see the square in there? Your eye goes to there, and yet you're seeing twirling, you're seeing triangles. Very interesting block, very interesting block, all made out of just strips, cut, subcut. So I'm going to go sew these together, and then I'll be back. So what I've done is I've sewn my two units together here, made my, my seam. And you do have to be aware of this this seam up here, this, this matching point there, which we've done before, remember, you're going to have your quarter inch left over there for your seam allowance, and then your quarter inch down here. And they will match up beautifully. Now, what we're going to do, we have a few little dog ears, remember? What we're going to do is we're going to cut off these little dog ears, these little legs here, just so you don't have the bulk. We cut off the edge, edge, edges ones. Because again, basically, it's sort of like a a large half square triangle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish my block and I'm going to finish it by sewing the two units together. And there's not there's there's these to be matched. They just are at the end. They will match, but you just want to you want to nest these seams. I pressed one seam to one side. I pressed this seam to the other side. So we're just going to nest these seams like we do, nest them together, you're going to pin them, you can feel where you can pin them, and I'm going to pin that right there, and then I'm going to start stitching from this corner, putting a pin there, right the way through, and then our, and matching that end, those ends, and then our block will be done. So let me tell you, I'm never going to laugh at my husband when I hear him say, I'm going to, uh, well, I need something cut one and 11 sixteenths or one and one thirty second. Um, because look at our perfect block. 
everything is absolutely perfect. This probably is the most perfect block I've made. Interesting. No uh, funky triangles, just a strip set. Now, let me just measure that. Look at that. A perfect 12 and a half inch square. Wow, perfect. And it wasn't all that hard. Um, I have done strip sets before, um, but not this configuration, not in this block form. Um, I love it. I think it's a, I think it's a super block. And I think if you, if you again, I've said this before, you can make just one block and, um, you know, have the same quilt. So you would be, you would be getting all of these different, if you just made this block and made 20 of them, you would get all sorts of different, um, secondary and, and third patterns. You would have, you would have something over here and then you'd have all these blocks and it, 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 it would open up a whole new world. But this just made out of strips and you get all of that interest. I'm, I'm really thrilled with this block. I think it's interesting. Um, we've changed it up a little bit here for block number seven. Um, um, or block number, uh, no, this is block number eight. Or this is block number, I forget what block this is. Um, but there you go. I think this is super, um, yeah, block number seven. And um, yeah, I, I love it. I hope you love it. Look at how nice. I'm, I'm just thrilled with the way this has turned out. And these things here. Remember, high contrast fabric. Um, scant quarter of an inch seam. Pressing really, really well. Press it beautifully. Um, the back, look at that. The back looks as nice as the front. I'm thrilled with that. Hope you are too, folks. Um, so it turned out. <laughs> I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I never know how my blocks are going to turn out. So you'll have seen it in the beginning. Oh, and then I will do, I will have, oh, excuse me. I will take a picture of my inch. <laughs> Hope you guys appreciate that. My one inch, just so you can see where between five eighths and three quarters it's a tiny, tiny little smidge, 11 sixteenths. Very, very important. And I, I'm really pleased with the way that that way that, that turned out. Sometimes we can just, you know, just slice off a hunk of fabric, but other times, real nice to be so precise and make a perfect block. So, um, yeah, have at it. And that's our block for the week. Thank you ever so much for following along. I'm just so thrilled. Okay, folks, bye. <laughs>